Hi everybody, welcome to lecture number 14, Network Services and Servers. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about two major concepts. So first thing, what are all the network services provided, provided by a network? Okay, provided by a network. And what are all the specialized servers we can use in a network? So these are the two major concepts that we are going to discuss in this lecture. Okay, now come to network service. What is a network service? It means the list of services provided by a network. Okay, list of services. List of services means we are going to discuss. Okay, there are I think some seven, eight services we are going to discuss in the same lecture. So, the list of services provided by a network, so that is I am going to say a network service. So, generally the network services, okay, they are going to be in the layer 7, okay. A network service is an application running at the network uh, application layer, that means in the layer 7. So, generally what are all the network services means? It can be like data storage, manipulation, data presentation, data communication, resource sharing. So, there, there are so many different types of services available. We are going to see in detail in the coming slides. Then any services you can be, you can implement in different architectures. Okay. For example, in a client server architecture or in a peer to peer architecture or you can have in a hybrid architecture. Okay. This is depending upon the service. So, depending, depending upon what type of service you need. So, based on that you can select your own architecture and you can implement. So, then you need some machine here. So, service means a particular machine is going to provide the service. All the other machines in the network, they are going to use that service. So, here we are going to talk about two different components, two different machines. So, one is a server component, okay, server com component or a server machine. The second one is a client machine, okay. So, there should be a server component and also there should be a uh, client machine, a client component should be available. So, generally the server component is going to provide the service, okay. The server machine is going to provide the service whereas the client component or the client machine is going to use that particular service, okay. So, this, this is the, the two different uh, components that you need to have a network service. Now, so network services means there are a lot of benefits available in that, okay. So, we cannot say, we cannot say okay no benefits plenty of benefits will be available okay uh, in a network service then this services list of services okay it, it may vary from one organization to another organization okay for example if you take a college environment the network in a college okay it is going to have some set of services it is going to provide some set of services whereas if you go for some other networks okay some industries okay or some any organizations if you go. So, there the list of services is completely is going to be different. So, what I am trying to say here the list of services okay the network services or the services provided by the network it may vary from okay from a network to network okay. So, depending upon the organizations it may change. So, some important services we already discussed in the previous slide okay same you can see here file sharing, printer sharing these are all okay like a resource sharing then email management of the host remote access okay data manipulation data communication data processing so there are plenty of services available okay so the list may vary from one place to another place now so generally network communication is a layered one we already discussed about this there are two different architectures sorry two different uh, layered approach we already discussed the first one is the OSI okay the second one the second one is the TCP IP. There are two different layered approach available. We already discussed about this. Now, if you are talking about the network applications, so there should be something like network operating system. Network applications uses the network operating systems or the client networking softwares to get the network protocol and to access the medium. So, these are all the components we can see. Some network applications available and we need some network operating systems or we need some client networking softwares and also we need a protocol and we need some media accessing the media. So, this is this is a collection a network is going to have all these things there. So, medium here it is it is nothing the physical layer that means a cable for exchanging the information. So, with, with other computers. Now, network services you can implement based on the network architecture 
based on the network architecture. So generally, there are three different types of architectures. Three different types of architectures. The first one is a client server, second one peer to peer and third one is a hybrid. So client server architecture, okay, so there will be a server machine and there are so many clients connected with that. So this is the client server architecture. So in a peer to peer architecture, so two machines, okay, they are going to exchange the uh, services or whatever it is, the data, anything. A hybrid architecture is a combination of the client server and peer to peer, okay. So you can implement the network services in any type of architecture. So these are the three different types of architectures given here. Now, if you go for network services means there should be a server machine. So the server machine is going to provide the service to, to all other machines. So you need a specialized server or you need a, a specialized machine or we can say you need a robust, a strong computer you, you need here okay, to provide the services. So in a very simple way, you take a client machine and a server machine. So client machine, you can have an ordinary configuration, okay, ordinary or we can say it is a medium configuration is enough. But if you are going for a server machine, the server machine should be very strong enough, okay, it should be very strong enough. So based, okay, strong enough means in both the aspects, that means the software and also the hardware based. So if you are going to talk about the hardware, that means your RAM, that means the RAM of the server machine should be high and also the speed, the number of CPUs, what type of disk you are using, okay, how much space you are going to have, the network interface card you are using. So all these things should be very strong enough okay, in a server machine. So whereas in a client machine, so if you are having a normal and ordinary machine okay, with a, with a uh, moderate configuration is enough okay, in both hardware and software wise I am telling, but a server machine should be strong enough. Okay, it should be strong enough. So in okay, that means in hardware and also so software based. Okay, so this is given here. Network services can be deployed on the specialized servers. Servers that are capable of handling the client request. A specialized hardware and software should be available in the uh, server machines. So minimum and recommended RAM, CPU speed, number of CPUs, disk type and space. Okay, network interface card type, etc. So, what we understand from this particular slide means, okay, so what you can have, you can implement network services in any type of architecture, this is a point number one and second point, network services means a server machine, you need a specialized machine there. So automatically here we have to have a very good hardware configuration that means we can say a robust, okay, recommended or robust or strong, you can use any word. Okay, so a powerful machine in a very simple way, a powerful machine should be okay, uh, should be there as a server. Okay, so this is the point. Now we are going to discuss about what are all the different types of services okay, provided by a network, around some six or seven services we are going to discuss from the coming slide. Now I am going for the first type of service which is the file sharing service. So if you take file sharing service. So this is one of the primary reason to have a network. Okay. So file sharing is one of the basic thing, basic service provided by a, by any network or in any architecture. Okay. Any type of network or in any net of any type of network architecture. So file sharing is going to be the basic concept. So what is that file sharing means? So there is a single drive or we can say a single directory. The files of the users will be stored in that and a user can access this file from anywhere okay from anywhere inside the network or outside the network okay so they can access from anywhere okay this, this is the main concept okay i'm, I'm just logging in in okay into my uh, user account i'm taking a file from okay from a particular machine so i can change the machine i can i'm now going to a different lab i'm going to sit in the in a different machine from there also i can access my files from the server so this is the main concept, okay, the primary concept of network is file sharing. Now if you talk about file sharing, the first component is the files. So this will be created by the users. Then the second com component is, okay, the drive, the drive or the directory and this component, this is handled by the servers, okay, the this component is handled by the server, that means this should be available in a server. Then the third one is, you need some type of operating system. Okay, for sharing these files. 
So that is going to be the network operating system which is going to perform the file sharing then administer the security of the shared files. So the third component we are talking about here is the network operating system which is going to provide or which is going to enable a user to access the files okay, from the server. Then the third component sorry the fourth component automatically we have to talk about the security. So security here means like access control. So all the users cannot access all the files. So user X can access only the files meant for him. So he cannot access the files okay, which is meant for somebody else. So that there should be some restriction here that is we are going to talk about the access control. Okay, We can say as the permissions. Okay, So what he can do he can read a file. Okay, a particular user can read a file, he can write into the file, he can delete the file, modifying the file. So all these things comes into the picture. Okay, so the security mechanisms. So these are the different components we have to okay, see uh, related to file sharing. Okay, I repeat, so if you take file sharing, that is a primary concept of any networking. Here the files, that means the data created by the users, that is the first component. The second one, these files will be stored in a shared directory or in a shared disk, okay, anywhere. Then the third one is we need some network operating system to access these particular files. And then the major component, the fourth component is the security. So we can say as the access control, okay, access control. So you will you, you will uh, study about this access control in the security courses. So what type of access control you can have? Okay, read, write, okay, different permissions available. Okay, so these are all the coming under the file sharing concept. So this is the first service and the basic service provided by a network. The second uh, major service provided by a network is printer sharing. Okay, so we can say printer sharing or we can say it is a resource sharing. So we, we all know about this. That means I am having 100 computers in a network, 100 hosts in my network. So I cannot provide 100, 100 printers for individual users, I, I'm, okay, I cannot provide okay, because if I buy 100 printers, so it is going to be very expensive. So what I am going to do, I am going to buy only a single printer, I am going to install the printer and all the users, all the 100 hosts of my network, they are going to share the same a single printer they are going to share. Okay, so this is printer sharing concept. So here in printer sharing you can have uh, like in, in a different uh, type of setup. What does that mean? You can have a printer server and you can have a printer. So that means a dedicated server you can have here in order to control the printer. So this is the first thing. And the second thing is directly you can share this printer with all, all the machines. So without having a printer server. Okay, so this is, these are the two different uh, variations you can have. Okay, two different setups we can have. So there is a dedicated printer server, then it is connected to the printer. So all the jobs submitted by the clients, it will go to the printer server, then from the printer server, okay, it will go to the printer. Okay, this is the first type of setup. The second setup directly, I can remove this printer server, I can install the printer directly and this will be shared by everybody. So what is the difference? The first concept and the second concept, what is the difference means? So there is something called a queue. Okay, the printer server will maintain a queue, we can see in the coming slides. Now, printer sharing is a closer runner-up runner, uh, runner in importance with file sharing. So it is almost related to the file sharing concept. So I can say it is a resource sharing. Okay, you can share a single resource. All the clients in your network, they can share a single printer, okay, resource sharing concepts. So nowadays printers are not costly, but still, but still we no need to have, okay, you no need to buy. Okay, uh, more printers nowadays, just one or two printer is enough. So depending upon the type of network, if you take our college setup, so in our college, we have the printers in all the labs. In every lab, there are around 30 to 35 uh, PCs connected. So all the 35 users, they are going to share a single printer. Okay, so even though printers are not expensive nowadays, but we can reduce the number of devices in our network. Okay, so this is more economical. Okay, you can share, you, you can share the printers, so no need to unnecessarily, you no need to uh, spend money for the devices. Now, so here you can have in a, in a two different setup. So what does that mean? We can have a printer directly, okay, shared with all the devices 
or you can have a printer server okay you can have a printer server so that is that is the second type of setup so printer sharing can be done in different ways on a network most common way is to use the printer queues on a server so if you go for a server concept okay there will be a queue okay printer queues that is a very very interesting concept so what this queue is going to do means so the printer queue is going to hold all the print jobs until any currently running print jobs are finished and then automatically send the waiting jobs to the printers that means a client can simply submit the job okay i want to print something in my network from my machine i'm just giving the print command now so the print command is okay that means print some file i'm i'm, I'm just giving a job to print okay a word document i want to print so now this job will be submitted to the printer that means the printer server the printer server is going to maintain a queue it's, it's, it, the printer server will collect the jobs from the different clients and it is going to manage a queue and automatically it will print one by one it is going to print the client machines no need to wait i can work i can continue my work okay so simply submit the job your printer server will take care of it okay it is going to maintain a queue so queue is nothing it is a collection of jobs submitted by the clients in a network now using a printer queue is efficient for the workstations it is very efficient it's a very good concept because they can quickly print to the printer queue without having to wait for the printer to process their jobs suppose if the printer is busy means you no need to wait you can submit your job and you can carry on that means the client machines can carry carry on with their jobs so no need to wait so the printer that means the printer server is going to collect the jobs from the different users in a network it is going to manage a queue so queue is nothing the list of jobs okay the list of jobs submitted by the different clients in a network so the printer will process one by one okay the printer will process one by one so network printers that uses printer queues always have a printer server so then we need a printer server so this is the first type of concept the first concept is this the second concept is the another way of sharing the printer is so let each workstation access the printer directly so directly the, the okay they can access so in our college we have both the setups okay the both the setups if you take the uh, staff room in the staff room we have the second type of set, setup okay directly the teachers machines from the teachers machines we can directly access the printer but if you go for the labs okay we have the printer server the printer server is going to take care of the printing jobs so this is about the uh, printer okay that means a printer printing service or printer sharing service we can say anything then the third type of service is application sharing service in application sharing service it is almost related to the uh, the first concept that means file sharing so here what we are going to do means some software okay for example you take ms office so i'm not going to install the ms of ms office in all the machines so what i'm going to do means so this ms office software okay will be available in a particular machine in an, in a network server all the workstations they can access ms office from there okay so instead of installing a particular application in all the machines we can have these applications running in a, in in a single machine so the users or the workstations or the host they can access this particular applications from the server okay so this is the concept so we no need to install okay uh, a particular application in all the machines okay you can see uh, same like file sharing concept and here what we are going to do means we are going to share some applications okay for example you can have a shared copy of the microsoft office or some other applications okay not only microsoft office some other applications also you can have so some other applications means you can see have some okay some installation some uh, some program some uh, what what to say some softwares you can have okay i want to install that software means you can go and take it from there from a shared file okay you can see some cd installation okay any types of installation you no need to have it in the individual machines you can have it in a in a common place in a network that means in a shared directory you can access from that okay so microsoft office is the example we are taking here you can have microsoft office in a centralized server okay in a, in a centralized place or in a server network server so the workstation who wants to run the program so they can load the files from the network into the own memory and just like it 
okay they can use it in the local drive so this is okay how we can share the applications so not only okay ms office so there are so many applications okay this is this is almost if you think about this okay you can you can find the cloud so in the cloud also the same concept okay so in the cloud uh, computing or in the cloud environment what they are doing means so the software will be available in one place okay even the operating system the entire operating system you can have in one place and whenever you want you can just use it okay so this is this is the the concept of application share so this is going to be a centralized one and it is going to reduce the amount of disk space needed on the each workstation so in the workstations you can reduce the size of the memory so that means you no need to install all the applications in all the machines so you can keep your applications in only one place in a centralized server and you can access from that particular machine so this is about the application sharing service so you can have one more example here so like installation softwares so you no need to have softwares in all the individual machines so you can have it in a single place okay in a single uh, machine so whenever you can you can just download that and you can you can not downloading you can copy it you can copy and you can run in the local machine okay so this is about the application sharing concept now the fourth type of services okay provided by the networks or email service so email it is one of the important services okay as far as networking is concerned so email service the capability of sending and receiving the email that means receiving the messages in a network not only within the network outside the network also okay so you can send and receive the uh, messages that means the emails within the network or outside the network so email is an extremely a valuable and an important network resources these days so it's a very important thing so the entire world okay nowadays so the quick the very quick and a reliable communication okay is email services so not only can be can it be helpful for the communication within the network and also that means this is already i told not only within the network from one network to another network that means from outside people also you can communicate with the people outside your network also so this is a, a very easy way of communication nowadays so the fourth type of service a network can provide is email service then the fifth services is network security service so this is a very 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 big topic it's a huge topic so security services network security services plenty of things available okay so just we have summarized here in a single slide okay so this is extremely an important part of your network extremely important part of your network is security service so what type of security services a, a huge list we can make the first thing is okay uh, security for your data second one security for the devices the third type of security security for okay that means to protect it, protect your network from the outside people so there are there are big okay list is available okay plenty of things is available so it is extremely an important part of in any network so any time you share the important and confidential information on your network you have to consider carefully the security of those resources so any any information important and confidential information it should be protected in your network so this is for this you need security so users and management must set up the level of security needed so in a in a network in a network what level of security needed okay it should be implemented so there are a lot of things we can talk about network policy should be available okay and a layered approach so net okay security in every layer so there are there it's a, it's a big concept it's a huge concept so different types of securities okay we need to protect our data and also to protect the resources then the different information it stores and need to participation in designing okay who has access to which resource that means the access control okay access control firewalls encryption okay uh, cryptography techniques uh, hashing techniques there are plenty of security mechanisms we can implement we can use inside a network network security is provided by a combination of factors many things including the networking operating systems so the physical cable what type of cable you are using okay so the way the network is connected to the other networks so there are huge list is available so what is the the, the overall idea means your networks should provide some basic security 
okay in order to protect your data and also in order to protect your networks okay that is the uh, the overall idea here okay so every network you take it will provide some types of security services it will provide now moving on to the next one the next one is a remote access service so what is a remote access service means you can access the resources okay remotely so for example you can see in this uh, diagram i want to access my server or my machine okay or my data you can take anything so my data is available in the server i am sitting outside my network and i want to access my data from here so this is going to be the remote access so in the lab lab part okay you can discuss about it okay um, that means what is the telnet you can use the telnet concept you can access your uh, routers so using the telnet i can access my switch some resources i can access so this is called the remote okay so remote access means you are outside your network but you can use some commands by using some remote access concept you can enter into your network and you can access this device now if you are going for the remote access means automatically you need some protocol so there are two different types of protocol available so the first one is a telnet and second one is a ssh so we already discussed about this telnet telnet is a plain text it is a plain text protocol so it it doesn't provide any security so whatever the username okay or the password you are sending it will be sent as un unencrypted that means as a plain text so your data or the any passwords whatever you are sending through the telnet it is not going to be encrypted so it will be completely in the form of a plain text but whereas if you go for ssh so ssh is a very strong secure shell so this will provide security it will encrypt everything by using okay public key encryption so all your data will be encrypted okay in the ssh so you can use any type of uh, protocol and you can access your uh, servers or servers or any resources okay so this is the remote access service concept okay you can see here so provide virtual connection to the remote terminals so you can connect to a uh, machine remotely you can connect so here you can have a telnet protocol or we can use ssh secure shell so telnet the basic remote access service without encryption so there is no security here in telnet okay everything will be transferred or everything will be communicated in a plain text format only but whereas if you go for ssh ssh uses encryption to secure the connection between the client and the server so between the client and server whatever the communication takes place it will be completely encrypted in ssh so up to this we discussed six different types of services okay so the these are all basic services there is no end for this so the, the list is not a completed one here okay a huge list is available so only six different services we are, we can, we discussed in this particular lecture now moving on to the next one we are going for the the next concept of this lecture is specialized servers so specialized servers means okay to to provide all the above services whatever the services okay we saw okay in the previous slides to provide all the services we need strong machines the machine should be very strong so that that machine we are going to say as a specialized server okay specialized servers so as far as the uh, hardware and software both concern okay it should it should be a, a very strong one the hardware configuration should be in the higher end the software okay also should be in the higher end okay then only it can provide services okay it will provide the services so specialized servers so specialized servers means you can see network services are installed on one or more servers to provide shared resources to the client computers that means the network services are installed on the servers that means server machines so this server machines only we are going to say as a specialized servers okay they are dedicated servers so they can provide only that particular job okay so dedicated means file server means it will provide only file service printer server means it will provide only printer service okay so the specialized or we can say a dedicated machine will be available for that now for example these are all the different types of servers dedicated servers you can have in your network file server printer server email server web server application server communication server so these are all the different types of servers we can have in your network okay so these are all specialized machines 
so it can be used only for that particular purpose so that's why we can, we say it's a dedicated machines now what are all the different types of servers so we are going to discuss about all the different types of servers one by one so the first one is file and print okay file server and printer servers file server and print server or printer server so what they are going to do okay so what is the, the main function means so they provide basic network file storage okay you can store that means the users can store all their files okay so basic network file storage retrieval service that means the users can access their files and access to the printer network printers so there are two things we are combining here so what is the file server and the printer service so basically the users can store the data there the users can retrieve the data and the users can access the uh, printers so user can run application locally but keep the data files on the server so this is what we are doing in our lab so all the students files we are going to store it in the server okay and they can access the students can access the files to their local hot disk and they can uh, use it they can execute it okay they can modify it and finally the students are going to copy that in the uh, server machine okay the final copy will be available in the server machines so the print those files when they want the hot copy so whenever you want you can print it through the printer server you can see this uh, topology so client machines there are many clients available we are having a file server so the file server is going to have all the copy of the data okay so the user can access from the file server user can execute okay you can modify you can read whatever you want you can do it and finally the user is going to store in the file server so if the user wants to print it means so from the file server it will be given to the printer server and then hot copy will be printed so this is this is a general setup okay so how the file and printer server or okay where it is located okay how it is working it's a big it's it's, it's a very big concept so how it will be located or how it will be connected you can see in this topology diagram then any windows network or linux server can act as a file and a printer server so any ordinary windows servers if you take server machines even the windows server machines you can use it as a file server okay and a printer server also okay so this is about the file and printer servers now moving on to the second concept mail servers so the mail servers they are going to handle email messages from the users okay from the different users either from the inside or outside the network so it is going to handle all the email messages then so might involve simply acting as a clearing house so what is the clearing house means whatever the mails coming so it is going to put it in the respective mailbox okay uh, by using you know about the different protocols smtp protocol pop3 protocol okay there are different protocols okay implemented in the different layers so in the different levels so mail server it is going to handle all the emails from the users and also it is working as a clearing house okay it is going to uh, like receiving the mails and, and giving the mails and also it, it is so generally we can say it is a store and forward mechanism so store and forward means so it is going to receive the emails from the different users and it is going to store it and forwarding it to the corresponding users so can store outgoing messages until a connection to a external mail server is established and then forward the messages from the intended destinations so it is going to receive the emails from one okay one mail server okay the mail will be stored here that means in the mail server and it will be delivered to the users so there are different email uh, servers available you can the very common one is a microsoft microsoft exchange server group wise okay lotus nodes so these are all examples for the mail servers so depending upon your network you can have okay a mail server in your network now application servers so application servers okay application servers application servers they are going to handle the request from the clients okay or we can say it is going to hold the application programs or in a very simple way okay you take our sis system in the college student information system so the student information system is a software so which is running on a particular machine so students can access this software from anywhere okay so for example you are just taking your browser and you are going to type sis.sur.com so once if you give that okay 
by using your browser once if you connect automatically there is a home page is coming the home page is okay it's asking for the username and password you can give the username and password in the home page and it will be checked whether the username and password is correct or not it will be validated by the servers so now you can just keep that concept in your mind and you can follow this topology diagram so browser this is the user machine we are sitting here and i'm going to type www sis okay dot su dot com now so this okay that means the application softwares are running here that means the html pages are available in this machine and this software okay it is going to reach the client machine uh, right uh, using that the client machine is going to access the data so the data is available in the database okay a separate machine or in the same machine we can have it so database means it is going to be the collection of data whereas the application servers it is going to handle the request okay that means the client's request okay in a simple way so whatever the request given by the clients so this will be handled by the application servers okay so this is about the application server you can see this application servers supply the server side of the client server applications and often the data that goes along with them to the network clients so for example the database server so everything will go only through the application server okay whatever the request you are giving all the request will go only through the application server and it will reach the database so different differ from the basic file and printer server so file server is entirely different and printer server is different but whereas the application server is going to handle the request okay for the files or the printer service anything so application server is must okay so it is going to sometimes it may process your request also okay the users uh, request also it may process now moving on to the next one the web server so the collection of web pages all your web pages will be available so ias internet information service apache web server so these are all the examples for the web servers so world wide web is the most well known aspects of the internet made up of documents that means it is going to be a collection of html documents okay or we can say html pages so this will be interlinked by using the hyperlinks okay so all the web pages will be available here the html pages will be available here so the user can access the web pages by using the internet so this is going to be the web server so example web server internet information service apache web server many organizations in intranets take advantage of free web server packages okay in, even in our college so what we are doing means we are having some some uh, websites okay locally it it will be accessible only inside the network inside the college for example if you take the advisement system so the advisement system okay we can access only locally okay we cannot access through the internet so we are using the ias by using the ias concept okay we can we are having that particular setup so web servers it is a collection of html documents then so the next server is a fax server so almost the fax server concept is not available nowadays people are not using this fax servers very effectively nowadays okay because for instead of fax servers we have so many other things now okay starting from email so almost the fax servers it is not in use nowadays only in few networks so it is available so fax servers manage the fax traffic for a network it is going to receive the fax incoming the fax okay and it is going to distribute the it to the recipients over the network and collecting the outgoing fax across the network before sending them via the telephone so generally so you might have heard about it you, you know about how the fax system is working so through the traditional pstn network so as i already told okay so this but this particular service nowadays okay you cannot find okay uh, it's not very common nowadays okay only in a uh, few networks still they are using this fax servers then so use one or more fax modems so the device additional devices we need here so we need some fax modems here uh, interfaces to perform this task and common uh, most common servers okay you can have it in the windows netware linux based fax servers and some from the third parties okay lot of uh, third parties available you can use that servers also so for handling the incoming and outgoing fax services okay so we are using the fax servers so next one is a communication server so communication server it is a mechanism for the users 
okay outside the network to access the network resources okay uh, you can see the point here communication servers provide a mechanism for users outside their network to access that network resources and sometimes permit the user on a network to access the resources outside the local scope so that means from inside to outside outside to inside okay so a, a user from a network okay i am i am in i am in this network so i want to access some data from outside means so through the communication server we can access this so installing the communication server on the network enable the users who are all traveling or working at home and dial in network via a modem so nowadays the communication server is a very uh, it's very commonly available okay because of this covid situation so people can work from home okay my data is available in my office <coughs> excuse me so data is available in my office but i'm sitting in my home i want to access my data i want to do some modifications and all means by using the communication server we can do that so generally you can say in windows server okay so 2000 2003 or 2008 so routing and remote services or a or or as so this concept is available so remote access services you can remotely no need to go to your network no need to sit in your network you can access your resources okay particularly the data and files you can access from your network from your place okay wherever you are okay from your home a car in travel so you can access you can enter into your network and you can access it so there a proper security mechanism is important okay there should be a proper security mechanism so because we cannot allow everyone to enter into the network so a proper security mechanism should be implemented in that case now so the last type of servers okay we are going to discuss is the domain controllers so domain controllers or we can say is the directory servers so this is very common if you are going for a windows server setup okay in a windows server setup domain controller is is a basic thing so domain controllers to locate store and to secure the information about the network and its resources so in any version of windows windows server okay so 2003 2000 okay the list so it is going to permit the computers users groups and resources to be combined into the logical groups called domains so a domain it is a logical group it is a combination of many things including the computers users groups and resources so these domains can be controlled okay by using a concept of domain controller so a separate server even in our college we have this particular setup so the domain controller or the directory services will be available you can study about this concept in uh, uh, network management course okay there is a course network management so there you will completely talk about only the domain controllers how to install the domain controller in windows so what does it okay doing so all the concepts okay you will study in the network management course so here we are just as an introduction we are giving so domain controller or a domain or uh, a directory servers so it is a dedicated machine so this machine is going to control the entire domain okay in a network so a user belongs to a domain can access all the resources and information okay uh, which permits in that particular domain servers that handles this login services okay logon services that means the authentication process manages the collection of computers collection of computers in a network the collection of users and so on in a domain okay so it is going to control in a particular domain okay it is going to control all the resources including the users data okay login details okay computers so everything it will be controlled okay in a domain is a domain controller or a directory server so for this directory controller or a domain controller a separate machine will be used a dedicated machine will be used as a directory server so if you if you are having a windows based network okay so definitely you will have a domain controller so the domain controller is going to take care or it is going to control all the resources in a particular domain including the data and users okay so this is about the domain controller so domain controller we can study as a as a course okay it's it's not a, a like a simple thing it's a very big thing very huge thing okay so in network management course you will study about this okay i think maybe in seventh semester or sixth semester you are having a course okay introduction to network management so that you will study about the entire thing about this domain controllers so this is domain controller is a, is a dedicated server it is a specialized machine okay so summary what we studied in this lecture means we discussed about what are all the different services 
and what are all the different specialized servers you can have in a network ok. So, this is the thing. So, as far as the services are concerned like file sharing we discussed printing printing service, email service, ok web service. So, these are all the different services we studied and as far as the uh, servers are concerned printer server, fax server, email server, application server, domain controller, communication server. So, about all the servers we studied here. So, with this so lecture number 14 is completed. Thank you very much. Keep watching.